and there was some expiation to be done, in particular about my, my matricidal feelings. <laughs> <laughs> After all the years when they seemed to do nothing but talk, 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 she couldn't think of anything to say to her mother. Zoe either stared at her without animation or blocked her tentative ventures into conversation with a gloomy remark. Sometimes she thought how easy it would be to press a pillow over her mother's face. How long did a stifled person flail about before asphyxiation was achieved? Then she would go to jail for a long time, longer than however long this was going to take. <laughs> Why did everyone go on about longevity as if it were dearly to be wished for? There was that woman in France who lived to 122, which was simply freakish. She was glad her mother had eaten cream with everything and sorry that she'd given up cigarettes. <laughs> no other daughter felt this way about an elderly mother, she was sure of that. She was a hateful, lonely murderess. Shall we do the crossword? They did the simple clues these days. A four-letter word meaning woman, asked Margaret. Lady, said Zoe. There was a note of archness, even sarcasm in her tone, as if Zoe knew how insulting the clue was. Lady wasn't really a synonym for woman, thought Margot. There'd been a time when the two of them might have discussed this question, but no longer. Words that Zoe would have tossed off merely two years ago left her back. A seven-letter word for beginners. Nouveau riche offered Zoe. Margaret imagined how the key letters N, O, V had flipped up in Zoe's mind like judges' scorecards. It was almost heroic, really, the mind's last stand. There was a light knock on the door. It was Joyline, the carer, arriving to meet Zoe. Margaret introduced them. Zoe stared up at her nurse through thick paned reading glasses, a wad of sticky tape attached to the arm of her spectacles to its frame. Mrs. Teasley? I'm Jolene Adams, and I'm going to help take care of you from tomorrow. How do you do? <laughs> it's so kind of you to come, but in fact there's been a mistake. My daughter can take care of me. <laughs> um, and then, of course, there's a point of breakdown. Um, Margaret's been having a, a phone call with her lover in which she realizes he's spent the night with another woman, but she's possibly slightly more worried about the blocked shower drain. <laughs> After she'd said goodbye, she walked into the sitting room and contemplated the ash from last night's fire. She extracted the heavy metal train from beneath the grate. She'd burned too many bits of cardboard and paper, now there was too much ash, spilling onto the carpet and clouding the air. It was no good stopping now. She had to go deeper into the mess. Once she'd emptied the cold ash outside, she came back in, wet from the rain, and heaved up the dirty carpet. A mess of twigs, ash, and dog hair clung to it. It was raining too heavily to clean the carpet outside, so she shook it out right there, thinking to sweep it up afterwards. Most of the detritus landed on her, so she could feel it settle on her hair and face. She threw the carpet in a heap, and began to sob. Squalor is a natural byproduct of a happy home. If there are no spent wine corks, blunt pencil stubs, no scattered crumbs or stray playing cards in your sitting room, then there has been no celebration, no pleasure, no thought, and no play. <laughs> Zoe came in, slowly and furtively. These days she felt so unsure of everything that it seemed best to creep, to be a little sly. She moved as stealthily as an explorer recently landed on a foreign continent. There was some kind of a to-do going on in the room. A woman crying, her daughter. Although Zoe was afraid of falling, she tottered forward without a wall or walking stick to support her. She put her arms around Margot. Oh, darling, what is the matter? Whatever is the matter? I hate my life, said Margot. There's so much to do, I can't bear it. Her mother's arms were around her. She was holding Zoe's frail figure upright. <coughs> Mr. Morland came in to see what the commotion was about. She's having a nervous breakdown, said Zoe. <laughs> With one easy gesture.
gesture, Mr. Morland took the carpet away. He came back with a broom and a dustpan and tried to sweep the twigs and dirt <laughs> off the floor. He was not practiced in the art, and most of the ash was too fine for his clumsy sweeping action. Pierre stood in the doorway, taking in the scene, then fetched Mr. Morland a short brush and helped him sweep. Margot drew her mother down onto the sofa with her so that she no longer had to prop her up. You work too hard. We all noticed that you work too hard, said Zoe. What would you like to do today? Would you like to lie down and read? <laughs> Margot rested her head lightly, symbolically on her mother's shoulder. How could she think of sending this angel to an old age home? <laughs> but then her mother added, Well, perhaps your real problem is that you feel sorry for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I very much enjoyed creating my three male characters in this novel. Um, one of whom I'm pleased to say, um, though he's based on a real character, the real character doesn't read fiction. <laughs> As he explains in his extract. Uh, he's on, Mr. Morland is going on a blind date. As it was winter time and there were few tourists, Mr. Morland managed to find a seat right in front of the plate glass windows where the waves crashed. He did not like to meet the woman's eyes too much for fear that she'd assume he found her irresistibly attractive. He found out that her name was Heather and that she worked in a bookshop. Oh, I never read fiction, said Mr. Morland. I like books about life after life, soul journeys and enlightenment generally. Have you ever attended a seance or, or had a spiritual reading? No, she said, I think. But Mr. Morland didn't want her to trouble herself with talk. He could tell her everything she needed to know. The beers he'd had earlier had worked wonders. He had seldom felt so effortlessly loquacious. He told her about his work. I have some very prominent um, people as clients, but I can't tell you who they are. Very well-known Cape Town people. Some of them millionaires. I drive to people's houses to do the readings. I usually communicate with a person's spirit guides. Sometimes family members who passed away recently or even a long time ago are there, but, but they're not so helpful with the actual messages. I think, I know what you're going to say. You probably think this is a lot of hope, but I've had experiences. I can't begin to tell you the evidence. Is, what's the word for it? He didn't want her to start talking in the gap he created by forgetting a word, so he kept his bandwidth open with an umming noise. <laughs> Compelling, said Heather. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The evidence is compelling. This was going well. She seemed a good conversationalist. <laughs> when he temporarily ran out of things to say about his current life, he started to talk about his past lives. He'd run away from the Spanish Inquisition and only just made it onto a boat that was setting sail from Alicante. At that point in his narrative, a huge wave crashed against the plate glass. Whoa! exclaimed Mr. Morland. Did you see that? I'm Kelly. I was talking about setting sail and then the wave came. Shoo! <laughs> Heather interrupted him. This is fascinating, she said, but we've been so wrapped up chatting that we haven't even ordered a drink yet. What would you like? Mr. Morland took this in his stride. He knew that the women of Cape Town were feminist in their leanings and he could deal with the fact that Heather wanted to buy him a drink. <laughs> sure, sure. I I'd love another beer, black label. Uh. Heather took her bag with her and he watched her walk to the bar. He was puzzled when he saw her continue to walk out the door. <laughs> Perhaps she was visiting the ladies' room. He waited a good while, but she did not return. <laughs> Perhaps she had fallen ill. Women often did. <laughs> a DJ had been setting up in the corner of the room, and soon the floor was full of dancers. Mr. Morland loved to dance. He joined the happy swirl. <laughs> Um, one of the, the problems when you're a writer is that you have to invent jobs for your characters and you yourself have only got one job and that is a writer. So you can't keep having characters in every book who are writers. So I, I didn't think Mr. Morland being a psychic was very much kind of like what I do as a writer. Um, and then I, I made Margot a, a late night talk show host. Um, also because when you're a writer and you're writing well, you're afford to keep you up at night. Um, and, and because people say weird things to you, but once they know you're a writer, then you're like a late night talk show host, then wow, now they've got an audience, here's a chance, publication maybe in the office. At last, her favourite caller, 
never made contact. I thought you must be asleep, Truman, said Margaret. I'm never asleep, came Truman's gravelly voice. I'm just sitting here on my porch on this chilly winter night. I gave my daddy's morphine shot an hour ago so everything is peaceful. I want to apologize. I'm smoking a little something, I'm drinking a little something, I'm thinking a little something. <laughs> I'll lay my head on the block, Margot, that your subway mother there on the Musenberg side is an escaped convict. Maybe he even escaped while awaiting time. It's easy for these guys to make a run for it, Margot, because why? Because have you seen the sides of the prison guards? Take that little turn there by the pick and pay their falls in the prison, Margot. The aisles is full of the Department of Correctional Services looking oh so important in their service ground. If I'm there, maybe buy half a lamb on a special to share with a few friends. I stand there behind his backside in the queue and I think I'm actually about to witness a human being burst. <laughs> their pants is just about splitting at the seams, they're so obese. Their hand basket is filled with fig cook and slap chips and two liter jar told me that's just <laughs> Bulging covered 